Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use compression on reverb. Now this is actually a very interesting technique because there are a lot of possibilities and different roads you can go down with it. One thing to bear in mind though is that you don't always need to use it, it can just be quite a cool creative thing that you can use, and I'll show you a couple of different ways that we can use it. So I've just soloed my large reverb bus here to show you what it sounds like, and then we're going to apply some reverb to it. So first of all, I have cranked the reverb up so you can properly hear it. And secondly, this is a very reverb heavy and open kind of track anyway, so it's a good one to demo it on. So we're just gonna open up a standard compressor underneath our reverb on our reverb bus. I'm just gonna use the Platinum Digital because it's very good overall reverb. And because we have so many different things going on at once, it's just gonna be quite a solid one to tame it a bit with. So there's a couple of different approaches that we can have we can either have a nice quick attack with a medium long release on it so we're kind of taming it all a bit more but dropping it down making it sound a little bit more intimate is one of the approaches that you can have with it so it sounds still nice and large with the reverb on but controlled like you're there as it were so a nice quick attack maybe between anywhere to be honest between zero and 20 milliseconds that can give some quite nice results so of course I need to drop the threshold right down because it's very quiet. And the amount of reduction you want kind of depends. I tend to stick around 2 to 3 dB for this because you don't want a huge amount of reduction on the reverb. It's a very natural sound and we want to retain a lot of that. So that's just opened it up quite a bit more actually. That's, yeah, that's a bit better. So if we want a snappier kind of sound on it, for this one 10 milliseconds works quite nicely. I leave the ratio pretty much as it is. I don't go any higher than 3 to 1 usually for compressing reverb because again it's quite a delicate sort of sound. We don't want to slam it by any means. And then we can kind of play with the release. It depends how much we want to actually compress really. But if we got a quick attack then a longer release works. but equally by dropping it down a bit there, it's just brought some more of it out a little bit more too. So we can either go with that approach or vice versa. We can have a nice long attack of like 90 milliseconds and a really quick release of like 20. It gives it a really nice rhythmic kind of feel to it. The type of knee you use also depends because it's a very continuous sound. There's not really going to be any point in your song where there's zero reverb, so it'll always kind of be doing something. So you can always have a soft knee to make it a bit more gradual, but we're going to need to change the threshold a lot for that, and you'll see why. So it jumps up immediately because it's compressing all the sound approaching the threshold as well, which is going to be an awful lot. Not a huge amount is going to hit that threshold, so we want to bring that right up again. So having this really soft knee here actually does sound nice too with these settings, so it's giving it that nice rhythmic feel but it's still a bit more continuous as well. But if we just change this again to be nice and quick with the longer release, it'll probably match up a bit nicer. Cool, so let's just compare this to what we had previously. This one's sounding a little bit gentler to me, it's just sounding a bit more natural. The other one's controlling it really nicely though, so it's kind of personal preference on that. And also depends what else you want to do with it. But for this one, because it's a gentler track, I'd probably go with a setting more like this than the aggressive one. However, if we do want to use the aggressive one, 
there's a couple of different things we can do with that. So there's a really interesting technique of actually side chaining one of the lead sounds or one of the big sounds in your track to the reverb compressor. So this way that when this sound comes in, it will cut off the reverb on that initial hit and you'll just be left with the tail of it. So that's really great on vocals. So when the singer is singing, then there won't be any reverb or certainly less reverb on their voice whilst they are singing and then it will just be on be on the tail end of their last word or phrase and it kind of cleans up the vocals really nicely but you'll still get a little bit of reverb on the body of the vocals i'm just going to demo this on the kick i'm just going to put it on the high kick because that's where i've got more of my reverb so I'm just going to go side chain audio kick high we'll just have a listen so obviously let me bring this right up With a very quick attack, really hard knee. Quite a short release, I'm going to lengthen that a bit. So by doing this with the kick, we're going to get rid of a lot of that reverb that's on the initial hit of the kick. So it kind of punches through the mix a little bit more. And then it's going to give this really nice breathing effect to pretty much the whole track. This is something to be very careful with though. I'd probably use a gentler one really, we're getting a lot of reduction there. Let's get rid of some of that. Otherwise it'll sound very unnatural. So it's something to be very careful with as well. So now I'll just try and show you what it sounds like in context with everything. It's more of a vibe feel to it opposed to a major processing application. So it'll be quite subtle. So it's just adding a bit of breath to it, but again, because it's quite subtle, it still sounds natural. This of course is yours to play around with. Increase how much reverb you want, increase or decrease the reduction from the compressor. It's all preference. Again, great on vocals, great on any lead sounds as well for side chaining. It just helps it cut through and stand out a lot more and gives it some more definition. So by putting compression on reverb, you do open up a lot of possibilities that you can play around with, kind of brings everything in a little bit more, makes it feel a bit more intimate and also a bit more controlled. So I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.